All right, so I am following the instructions that Z-Speed sends along with the C-Mac kit. It says, remove the slave cylinder, the dust boot, and pipe assembly by removing the pipe clip and two bolts. Retain the two bracket bolt on the outside of the trans. You will use this to mount the dust cover later. So, um, slave cylinder itself came out with three bolts. They're Allen heads, they are five millimeters. Uh, this outside, on the outside, there are two different mounting points, or at least there were for mine, because remember, I have the Z-Speed uh, HD CSC installed. Basically, there was one 10 millimeter bolt here on this guy, mounted right to this hole. And then there was this T30 bolt that went right here. That's where the bleeder was mounted to. So now that all of that stuff is done and dusted and the transmission is drained, uh, we can just pull off the slave cylinder and pull out this assembly so there we go everything is out so there's the old thing and you can see that my slave cylinder is pretty darn messed up at this point so i don't think i can blame anybody but myself for that so uh, i'll just put that down there next anyway i'm gonna read this and then do it so there you go So anyway, here is the C-Mac release bearing guide and the two bolts are inside and I have the blue Loctite sitting on the floor over there, but I need to get blue Loctite, put it on these threads and install it. Uh, the spec is 80 inch pounds. So there you go. Uh, I will do that and then I will remove the five bolts as shown here in this picture, bottom, bottom, right middle basically this side corner bit so anyway there we go let me get started so where i'm at right now is that i was able to get the bottom one out uh, it's a four mil these are the replacement bolts right here for the same thing uh but this one rounded out uh i tried hand tools first it spun a little bit then i got out the impact and then i hit both of them with the impact and this one came out and this one just spun so now I have to get it out. I have a replacement, so as long as I don't damage what's behind it, everything's fine. So I just have to figure out the most effective way to pull it out. Um, I've been trying to tap in a T30, which is slightly bigger, to try to get some grab, but I'm, I haven't gotten very far yet. So I don't know if I should keep trying that or something else, but uh, it, it's got to go pretty far in there to be able to grab on that. So I guess we'll just have to see. Uh, I do have some screw extractor stuff here. This guy, none of them are the right size to grab the outside that I can still get to. So that's unfortunate, but I may have some drill based ones. I would just am pretty wary about drilling in because I don't want to hit the actual threads in there. Although I guess, I, I mean, the, honestly, the threads are just about as wide as the head is, so anything that's going to get big enough to get the head larger is going to screw me, so I would have to go smaller. So, I don't know, I'll, maybe I'll look around the shop and see if I can try that. And as long as I have threads that are smaller than the, uh, wherever the bolt is, the one I took out, maybe that would work. I'm not sure. That sucks. Just another slowdown. So really quickly, I wanted to share with the internet my victory. Uh, if that'll focus at all, I don't know if it will. Um, I used a metal mallet head, a big one. Where'd she go? Right there. And I slammed this Torx T30 in there. Sorry, the camera died while I was talking. So anyway, I was able to get that pounded in there with the Torx T30, which was just barely bigger than what I had. And uh, I started out with a rubber mallet, but I ended with a metal one. The metal one got me a lot more movement per swing. And I found that the most important thing was to make sure that this guy was fully seated each time you wanted to hit it, because you'd hit it and then it would rebound a little bit. And so you'd want to reset by pushing it firmly against and then hitting it again. So <sighs> the five minute removal has become an hour long endeavor. Actually, maybe it wasn't an hour, but it felt awful. So anyway, now I'm going to 
uh, put Loctite on the new bolts and slide the new cover back on, you'll notice it's really similar because I'm sure Z-Speed uses the same basic plate for both jobs. You can see there's some keys on the back that you're supposed to line up. And there you go. And then we're also going to have to make sure it's nice and centered when we tighten up those bolts. But anyway, I'll put blue Loctite on, and on them and hand thread them in and then put them to 80 inch pounds. Got them. Done and done. Now the bottom five bolts are out. They're all 12 mils. I used the bigger impact to get them. So the smaller impact couldn't turn them. So good old big half inch impact. So the next part's pretty obvious, but I'll show you anyway. So the instructions basically say do install the throw out bearing fork, the throw out bearing on the fork assembly. So this is the fork assembly, this is the throwout bearing, and it says to match the red marks. So there's a red mark here, and if I flip this guy over, you'll find a red mark there. So the red mark, is it gonna go with the red mark? So it's gonna go in there like that, except I'm gonna have to thread it in and then lift it over. And then as it says, I'm grease those four spots, and of course it does come with the grease for it, so I'll grease those four places and get it installed. So I got the grease in all the places that it says under this plate, uh, between these two plates, between these two plates, and under this plate, and then inside of there in the little ring. And then I actuated it, which I believe goes like this. You can see it slides down. It slides down. Anyway, you need two hands. And uh, then I wiped off the rest, just like it says. So yeah, that's that part. Let's move on to the next step. So the next step is relatively simple. There's a bag that has five of these bolts in it. It says they're 55 millimeters long and they're half inch bolts, or excuse me, they're 55 millimeters long and they have half inch spacers. So what it says to do is on those five bolt holes that we took out, I'll walk over there and show you. Uh, note these holes here, these holes are gonna line up with those same things. So it says to put, set that guy right there. It says to put the spacer behind, then to put the metal bracket, then to put the bolts through. So it'll be a little bit interesting how to do that. It says you can use some Permatex adhesive stuff, but I'm not really sure. I may just try to do them one by one. We'll just have to see. But basically it goes spacers behind the bracket like that, and then bolt goes through it. So that's what I'm going to do now. And it also says to apply blue Loctite to those bolts, so I'll do that too. All right, so we got it all installed here. You can see that I put those 14 millimeter bolts in and I put the aluminum washers behind. Let's see if I can get some light in there. Not flashing light, yeah. So the aluminum washers are behind. And uh, the directions basically say that you wanna make sure that it moves real easy. So you can see that it moves real nice and easy. Um, the way that you, that way that I did it was I put in each bolt and I uh, just fished the thing behind it like this or something so I could put the uh, bolt it through the aluminum but anyway and then uh, definitely make sure you follow the procedure of uh, hand tightening this guy and hand tightening this guy and while supporting this uh, fork um, my bolts were a little bit tough they were a little bit tough to hand tighten so I actually spun them in with a ratchet it looks like there was some old uh, Loctite in there and just be to be clear uh, it says to use Loctite 243. Uh, Loctite 243 is more, slightly more resistant to oil, but I don't have any 243, so I'm using 242. So I guess know that at your own peril. Um, I didn't know there was a different type of blue. I just thought there was blue, red, and some other stuff. I didn't know that there was different oil resistances. But anyway, 
Uh, everything in here looks in order. I think it's time to move on. I did torque them to 20 foot-pounds, doing this one, this one, and then the other three. So there you go. All that stuff is in. So the next step is to install the metal dust cover. It came with this thing on it, which I can only assume is to protect the nice, shiny outside surface. But of course, I'm getting it all dirty. So. But anyway, I'll just show you really quick. You, uh... You slot it in here, and you hook those little hooks on the inside, and you fold it up into place, and then you reuse the T30 bolt that came out uh, to cover this up. And that's how it works. The next thing it tells you to do in one line, in a single step, is reinstall transmission into... The next thing it tells you to do, in one single step, it says, reinstall transmission into vehicle. So, in one step, please let me uh, do that. And then I will continue the installation. Um, that's pretty much it. I guess uh, I can talk about what I think it does now and how it looks. And, you know, I mean, there is no opportunity for anything inside of here to get hot, which is huge. Um, you know, as long as these bolts don't come loose or anything, which is like the, the classic, what would be your problem? Um, doesn't really seem too bad. I'm not really super impressed with the dust shield, if you ask me. Like, uh, I, I, I think dust is going to get in at some point, but it, uh, if you do it right, it has clearance and it doesn't hit anything, so I guess it's all right. But anyway... That is the C-Mac install, at least inside of the transmission. Now let's uh, work on getting it back up. You know, one thing I just realized that it doesn't say in the instructions, as far as I can see, but uh, you shouldn't forget is to put transmission fluid back in your transmission. So actually, I am going to torque this guy, and I'm going to fill this up before I put it back up, because uh, that's I think that's going to be easier. Uh, I did get... Uh, it's over here. Ugh. What I got for transmission fluid is a red line MT85. So that's what I'll be putting in. So this is my solution to filling the transmission with fluid. Uh, it's pretty jank, but I think it's going to work. Uh, just take the guy, pour it in the top. I, I shove this funnel into this rubber hose, clean out this rubber hose, and this rubber hose fits in the fill hole. And the torque spec for each of these, both of them, is 25 foot-pounds. So torque them, torque to 25 foot-pounds and fill it up until it's full. Um, if I read it right, it should be three quarts. Here's three quarts. So there we go. Time to fill it up. And then, of course, what's going to happen is it's going to get full and it's going to back up. And when it backs up to here, I'm going to waste whatever's in here. So I'll just have to pull this drain pan over and let the rest fall because I don't have the pump that you need. And I think it would be easier to do it here than not in here, so I'm going to do it. Alright, so I got the trans in. Sorry I didn't get a good video of it, but it really went pretty easy with a transmission jack. Super easy, actually. But, uh, um... I need to torque the alternator bolts, but otherwise all of the bolts between the trans and the engine are torqued. And of course I need to re-plug in everything, but uh, yeah, that's where we're at in case anybody was wondering. It's 55 foot-pounds for these trans bolts, and it is 35 foot-pounds for these guys. And these guys are the biggest pain. The biggest recommendation that I can offer you is come up in here, up where my hand is, there's a 10 mil. And another 10 mil up here i don't know if you can see it but on top of this uh rubber thing and you can separate these hoses which gives you some more leeway but these guys are also a pain and then definitely don't forget when you're reinstalling this stuff to reinstall this little viewing window here or this little viewing window this one goes on the bottom right here uh and the other one goes over here on the side right up in here it's pretty dark so you probably won't be able to see but yeah um so now i'm gonna i'm gonna basically shore up all of the transmission bits before I continue the install because I'd like to have the transmission fully done before I do the next step of the guide. So anyway, 
Okay, so the guide says after the transmission is installed, uh, check the clearance of the front fork to the front opening of the bell housing. So I already did that, and mine is about nine and a half millimeters. So my interpretation of what that means is up in here, you can see the arm, and you can see the arm has some free movement, but this is its like set point and it's talking about this gap right here. So mine is nine and a half millimeters. And basically that makes sense because it says the distance should be 11 to 16 millimeters with a proper clut with a proper height clutch flywheel. Distance may be smaller if the clutch is used or the clutch stack is, is too tall. So anyway, the more warm the clutch, the closer the front fork will be. If using the OEM original factory clutch set, the distance will be smaller. So since I am using an OEM-like clutch, I would expect the distance to be smaller than 11 to 16 millimeters. So the next step is to remove the starter bolt. And the starter bolt torque is 35 foot-pounds. So I have already torqued them to 35, so now I will untorque them. And then, or untorque the bottom one, so I can install this guy. Um, so anyway, yeah, I will now install the slave cylinder mounting bracket. Oh, never mind, hold on. So I need to remove the starter bolt and I need to disconnect the slave cylinder from the bracket. So let me do that quickly. All right, so I'm gonna cover this because I found it confusing. Uh, it says install the slave cylinder mounting bracket to the transmission using the lower original starter bolt and the supplied M10 by 1.5. Uh, and then it says install the slave cylinder to the bracket and adjust the slave something, something, something. But over here on this page, it basically says install the stainless steel clutch line and remove one or two metal harness brackets from the starter harness and zip tie the harness to the slave. So basically, I was trying to do this step where I was trying to install it, and I already had the starter harness uh, pieces installed. I'll show you what they look like. So the starter harness, this guy bolts right up there and uh, where the where the bolt is, and it uses this bolt, which I have now moved out of the way. So actually, I had this bracket pinned underneath this bracket, and then the same thing over here where this bolt is, this is the lower starter bolt, as you can see. Uh, it has this guy right here, and it's supposed to go right there. So I guess for me, I was super confused because I had bolted this shit on, uh, I had bolted this stuff on, and then, uh, I was like, oh, I don't need this. So anyway, my understanding is that it's gonna, I'm gonna delete these two brackets and I'm just gonna zip tie this harness up to here and then run it underneath here and then still plug it into the starter in the same spot. But anyway, I guess I found it confusing so I wanted to cover it. I mean, it, it works very clearly. I think it's gonna be a little bit interesting to get the torque wrench in here to torque this bolt again. But anyway, that's what I'm doing and that's how it works. So now I gotta tighten these guys up and then I will install the uh, slave cylinder right here on these two bolt holes. All right, so I got the slave cylinder in place. Um, I was able to reach through from behind and kind of like slide it in and then drop the bolts through. Uh, so it looks like I have everything in the correct orientation, but let me look really quick, compare it against the picture. Oh, I don't. So I gotta fix that really quick. So it should go bolt, master cylinder, spacer, uh, plate, nut. So let me fix that really quick. Now I've got everything right. It goes bolt, uh, slave cylinder, uh, spacer, plate, nut. And you can see that that matches on both sides. It wasn't all that hard. You just set the spacer on this platform and then you push it in and then you drop the bolt through. It's not so bad. So now uh, that back bolt has been torqued to 35 foot-pounds, and now I gotta tighten up all this stuff so it doesn't wiggle around. And that looks just about as straight as can be. I mean, I don't really think that there's much adjustability there, so you just hope that it's perfect, which, you know, seems to be all right. But anyway, um, now I will, as the instructions say, I will go to install the hard line. Uh, so I'm gonna go do that. I'll grab the hard line and uh, get that put into place. I am gonna have to remove the other hard line that I already have in here. Um, I'm guessing it could probably be reused, but I will uh, just just try to do the way that I'm supposed to. So there you go. 
Um, let me get that set up. All right, so I wanted to cover this because I screwed it up once, so I wanna make sure that I at least explain how I screwed it up. So uh, my guess is that this line here is a part of the HD uh, clutch slave cylinder kit that I had. So the new one comes with a replacement for this hose. So I was dumb and the first thing I did was pull out the clip, this clip right up in here. But you don't actually want to pull the clip out first. First, you want to break this uh, uh, flare nut, flare nut loose, and uh, spin it out. Because once you unbolt this, then these two, this whole assembly is free to float around, and you can't spin them independently. So just be careful of that. Uh, so I already broke it loose. So now I'm going to spin it the rest of the way out, and then I'll put this line on here, and then I'll slip the banjo bolt in right here with the two crush washers, and that'll be it. That'll be the whole install done. And with that, everything is connected. Uh, this is a 15 millimeter bolt. Uh, up there, the flare nut is a 10 millimeter. Uh, that was a pain. I hate those clips. Uh, I, I understand that they work, but they suck. I hate putting them in. I eventually was able to hammer it in uh, by using this uh, pry bar and just kind of hitting the end of the thing because I was not able to do it with my hand force alone. So everything's tied up in here. This is how I did the zip ties. Right here, I zip tied it to the bracket and uh, ran it up in here. So I'll cut these zip ties off and then uh, I'm gonna put the drive shaft back in and then put the exhaust in and that will be it. She will be all done. Uh, don't forget your connectors. This blue guy right here, don't forget him. Oh yeah, and uh, don't forget that I'm gonna have to lower this, put the shifter back in then raise it, then bolt this guy back in. Actually, I'm probably gonna do that now. So uh, that bolt's over here. So let me get started on that. And then of course, when I'm done, I'll have to bleed the clutch, but that's nothing compared to everything else that I've done, so. There we go, the instruction guide is finished. All right, Kevin just helped me fully bleed the clutch. And now it's time to see if it worked or not. Okay, well there you go.